right, so we're going to finish this off. It was a bit of a cliffhanger when I left Admiral uh, Zheng reporting to his emperor, uh, Zheng He. And so when he gets home, he gives this big report about everything that he's seen and the people that he's met and the ports and so on. And he and the emperor and the court conclude they're going to stay behind their wall. They're going to pretend this never happened. They're not going out again. That the people that they've encountered are too violent, too uncivilized, too unpredictable. It's too far. They'd sooner stay behind their wall and let people find their way in through the north and not engage directly politically with these people because it would be, in their view, an open invitation for these much more violent and, and savage uh, people to, to uh, be introduced uh, into their borders. So that's the end of Chinese exploration. But about 75 years later, there's this guy, Christopher Columbus, who takes off from, from Spain and sails over here and hits the Caribbean, he makes a landfall there. Uh, now he's sailing in 1492, as we all know, and he's only going that far, uh, as opposed to Admiral uh, Zheng He, who went from here to, uh, my hand's not big enough, all the way around here. But um, that is officially the discovery, so to speak, of North America. However, in about the year 1000, it's pretty much... Um, archaeological evidence is here to prove that the northern peoples, uh, the northern Celts, had already been up in uh, this area. Uh, and of course the Siberians uh, traveled back and forth across this way. Um, so the world has had some connections. If you remember that early heroic connection of our African ancestors from here traveling here and then across all the way to Australia, where like the Chinese, they just decided that they would stay there on the whole and not talk to anybody else for 40,000 years or so. Um, there have been these massive migrations, but again, in the uh, 1400s, you see this epic voyage, and 75 years earlier, this epic voyage. So it's only a question of time before somebody actually circumnavigates. Now that leads to um, a particular uh, need and I was waiting for my lovely assistant to come home. So I'm going to hand over the phone to him and he's going to uh, film my little scientific experiment. This is something I I saw first in the Royal Ontario Museum in an exhibition about Chinese early uh, Chinese technology. I guess you would call it medieval. Um, but it was, how did that admiral make it all that way? And he was using a real classic, do you want to get a little closer to the water? Real classic Chinese technology, a porcelain bowl and water and a needle. And um, if you float a needle on a bowl of water, it will turn itself uh, to uh, the true north every time. And I guess, you know, he was a eunuch, actually, the admiral. Must have spent a lot of time around women who had um, needles and did a lot of embroidery and so on. And they might, might have observed this, um, but he had, uh, this is the first compass. And our needles are steel, so they sink. So I sort of fooled around and figured out if I got some bubble wrap and from an Amazon package and, and cut it up and put a bubble wrap on there. Do you want to come a little closer, honey? And then we'll put that on there. And we'll let that, um, try and get that uh, before it sinks, leveled out a little bit. I did this a whole bunch of times. Whoops. Um, but you have to work quickly before the needle sinks. I'll try and get it in there. Oh, it's going to sink. OK, I'm going to try another one of these little dealios. Hold on. Oof, we're going to get there. You can try this at home. It'll drive you completely insane. But I have to cut the little, um, you know, puff pack thingy, stick the needle through it, and then get it in there before 
um, the air is gone. So we get little uh, water wings. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. And take my word for it, that needle is now pointing north. And uh, I can do it again if you have the patience to put up with it. But this is something you, you guys with um, that are homeschooling especially, uh, you know, I, the, the Chinese, of course, were very good at um, uh, making uh, things out of uh, copper and, and brass, bronze. So their needles might have been out of a lighter substance. I'm putting the guy in there. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Let's hope that doesn't. Oh, that one's that one's kind of sunk. It kind of hit the bottom of the bowl. Well, yeah, I don't have enough air in there, but it would come around naturally uh, to that north-facing um, direction every time. And so this, oh, it did it. It did it by itself. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Abel. Do you use your pointer finger uh, assistance. Thank you. Okay. And that... Uh, is pretty much it, except for I'm going to put in uh, another dynasty on my timeline, which I pre-prepared, uh, the lovely uh, Gupta civilization at 320. Look at this. Constantine takes over in 306 AD, and uh, Gupta dynasty in India starts in 320. So we start seeing these massive coincidences um, along the way, just in the for what it's worth department, trying to put it all together as we're uh, just past the midway po point in our course. Thanks very much. That's it for now.